All right, so I have this old drill master cordless circular saw that I got from Harbor Freight and it has an old NICAD battery. Uh, unfortunately, NICAD batteries go bad pretty quickly and this has effectively been in my drawer for years because I can't use it. So today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your NICAD battery basically refurb it into a lithium ion battery. As you can see, I'll put this in here. This was freshly charged yesterday and it's just not holding a charge. Now, if I hook up a couple of lead wires here, and here's a DeWalt battery there. We can see if it'll work. Yeah. It still works decently if it's got decent power. So let's get this thing refurbished. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use old lithium ion battery cells to refurbish this. Here's a battery pack I've made for something else. What you can do is you can take apart laptop batteries and turn them into this. So let me show you, show you how we're going to do this. First, let's take this one apart and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, I got it apart and you can see that the NICAD batteries are leaking. I was hoping that we were gonna be able to fit 10 of the cells in there, but because of the strengthening tabs and the screw inserts, we just don't have room, so I'm gonna have to only do five cells. As far as the laptop batteries, to get the cells out of it, you can just get anything generic that's cheap. A uh, laptop battery usually has about six cells in it, so we'll take that apart. And depending on the design of the laptop battery, I found anything from squeezing it to break it apart with channel locks can work, or you can cut it open and pull it apart with various pliers. After taking them apart, you're going to want to remove the little circuit board that's attached to the batteries. That's just a BMS that helps keep them from getting overcharged and lighting on fire. Usually the 18650 batteries will have their milliamp hour capacities typed on the side. These ones are 1800 milliamp hours, which is higher than the original capacity of the stock battery. So now we'll completely remove the old battery from the battery housing uh, to get ready to put in the new battery. I actually decided to use some batteries from an old pack I had instead of those laptop batteries. Once you get the batteries removed, you're going to want to test them. If there's any battery that's lower than the others, that's probably a bad battery and you want to discard that one. If they all came from the same pack, they should have the same approximate voltage. If the pack you're trying to fix is 18 to 20 volts, you're going to need five 18650 batteries in series. All right, so a quick lesson on series versus parallel for batteries. So if you have five batteries like this, You want to connect them in a series. Basically, your lead to whatever you're powering is going to go here from this negative, and then from this positive, you're going to connect the positive to negative, and then the positive to the negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, and then this lead is going to go off to the positive of whatever you're trying to power. So basically it adds the voltage of all these batteries together if it's end to end where all the positives and negatives are touching each other like this. So if you have 3.7 volts, then it's gonna add up to be 
18.5 volts. Now, 3.7 is the is the low end of what you want these things at. They range basically from 3.7 to approximately 4.2 volts. If it's 4.2 volts times five, it'll be 21 volts. So that's why some manufacturers claim to have 18 volt battery packs and some claim to have 21 volt battery packs. It's just in nominal versus actual voltage there. Now, if you connect them in parallel, which is another way you're gonna need to know for doing something like this, you have your five batteries here. And in parallel, you basically connect all of the positives like this. And the positive lead goes to what you're powering. And then all of the negatives like this and the negative lead goes to what you're powering. And if these are a capacity each individually of 1800 milliamp hours, then you, rather than adding the voltage, it's all gonna stay at 3.7 volts, but it's gonna be 3.7 volts at five times the 1800 milliamp hours. So it's gonna be 9,000 milliamp hours of capacity for 3.7 volts. The reason you need to know that is that if I connect just a five series battery system like this and they're each 1800 milliamp hour, then it'll be 18.5 volts at 1800 milliamp hours of capacity. In order to increase the capacity, you need to combine the two. All right, so for each of these individual ones, you connect them parallel, and then you're adding, so this is 1800 milliamp hours to 1800 milliamp hours. So you have a capacity of 3600 milliamp hours, but you wanna add the voltage together as well so that you go up to the 18 or 20 volts. So you have two, parallel and then you treat each of these as a cell and put five in series so this goes to the negative that you're charging the positive goes off to the positive for the device that you're charging and then you're going to connect the positive to the negative positive to the negative positive to the negative and the positive to the negative and that way, basically, this is all in series here, adding the voltages, while at the same time having parallel connections to add capacity. So you end up with, if it's 3.7 base voltage, 18.5 volts at 3,600 milliamp hours. The 3,600 milliamp hours is what's gonna allow you to do more work for longer. Now back over to making it. Remember that I'm only doing five single 1800 milliamp hour batteries in series because that's all I could really fit with the tabs that are in my battery casing. When you're soldering leads onto 18650 batteries, you wanna minimize the amount of time the heat's applied to the battery because too much heat can possibly explode the battery. So I'm putting a little flux here so that the solder will take to the terminal even faster. I also pre-fluxed the ends of the connector wires so that, and pre-soldered them so that I didn't have to lay the soldering iron on them for a long time while they're on the battery. You really wanna reduce the amount of heat that you're putting on that battery. All their voltages should be added together and we should be somewhere around 18 to 20 volts. So let's do the end there. Yeah, 19.5. And this part is where it gets a little more complicated. So the last thing you're gonna need for this is a BMS or battery management system board. Okay, and so you will have a battery management system board and its job is to Make sure that the battery gets charged to the right amount, but not overcharged so that it, it creates a fire. And a lot of times they'll also 
stop it from over discharging so you don't damage the batteries. So the, the negative part of your battery terminal is gonna come to, the, to one of the nodes on your BMS board and then the positive is gonna come to a, a positive node on your BMS board and here we're all running series, it's a five series. And this is why when you pick your BMS board, you're gonna want it to be a 5S board, which means five series, which means you're gonna have five batteries in series, which you're adding up to 18 to 20 volts approximately. So the voltage comes to your battery management system board and then off of that, comes two other lines we're gonna we're just gonna call this positive and negative and the positive line will go over to here to what you're trying to power and over here to the negative line of what you're trying to power and the circuitry in between is going to be what controls the charge and how much much charge it takes on you're also gonna have four other wires coming off the BMS board and their job is to basically make sure that each individual battery is charging evenly because if you get an imbalance that can cause issues with the battery pack and it can just make it go bad. So their job, you just have one coming to each of these bridging connections like this and then it also reads it off of the this terminal as well and so each of these connections on either side of these batteries allow the system board to read the individual voltage on the batteries to make sure that it's not getting too out of whack with the other ones once you have everything soldered up i would use electrical tape to cover all the connections uh, that way you don't make accidental shorts or connections that you don't want to that could potentially cause a fire. Oh, there we go. There, now we're gonna put it together for now. And we're just gonna see if it works. All right, after getting it all put together, I tested the voltage to make sure the proper voltage was coming from the nodes, which it was, it was like 19.5 volts. But then I plugged it in and it wouldn't start. And after a bunch of troubleshooting, I figured out that the BMS board was bad. So I had to order another one and wait three days for it to arrive from Amazon. It looks like we finally have her figured out. 20.6. Try it one more time. Oh yeah. So there you have it. The BMS board here, battery management system board. And you have five 18650 batteries. And basically what you have here is this going to the power feed, which will both charge it and discharge it. And then each of these wires goes in between. Now let's put it back together and try, charge it and try it out. that in and then this should yeah see lights on should charge from this and then the battery management board should shut down the charging internally when it's full and the charger itself's not actually controlling when the battery stops charging so I tested it out and it only made it through two and a half pine boards basically before it really started dying down which was super disappointing but i knew what i had to do i had to go back 
and double the amp hour capacity of it. So that's what I did. After cutting out a few of the tabs in the battery housing, I was able to fit two in parallel a 5 series, so a total of 10 18650 batteries in there and get it put back together and test it out again to see what happens. So it went from a 1.3 amp hour to approximately 2.6 amp hour battery. Definitely already feels more powerful. Doubling the milliamp hour capacity of the battery increased the amount of cuts that it could make by at least 20 fold. Somebody explain to me how that works. It just blew my mind. Alright, so I was able to break down all these pallets on one charge. I made all the cuts for this side and then all the cuts for that side there. And two of these pallets are oak and additional one is another kind of hardwood. And as you may know, that's a lot harder on saws than just the pine. It can run through the pine real easy, but the oak actually takes some work and some battery power. I also got up the line on this pallet, which is again oak, and then started right here before it just died. And that's what happens a lot of times with these lithium ion powered ones. They'll go fine until they're done and then they just stop. There's no real gradual decline a lot of times. And that's, that's what this did. It just gave up, but I still, honestly, I'm surprised. I can't believe all those pallets, I can't believe it made that many cuts, especially with as much hardwood as there is there. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please go down below, hit a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. Tell me what I did wrong. Tell me what you do different. 